Hey guys, I'm Jason. And I'm Kyle. And in this Tech Tips episode, we're going to be talking about the differences between a spur gear motor and a planetary gear motor. First, let's talk about spur. By definition, a spur gear has teeth that are parallel to the axis of the rotation of the gear. So that includes internal gears and gears with the teeth facing externally. It would disclude bevel and worm and face gears. If you pick up a gear motor and the output shaft is not centered, that's most often going to be a spur gearbox. Uh, spur gearboxes have a series of stages within them, and each one is going to reduce the output speed as well as increase the torque. Let's take a closer look at the spur gear motor. So on top of the spur gear motor, there are going to be three tiny Phillips head screws. You want to make sure you get the appropriate sized screwdriver in order to get those out because if you strip the heads out they're going to be very difficult to get out of there and once those are loosened up you can slide the top off of it to expose the gears this is just kind of a cap or a cover that covers the the gears in most cases and then it also contains the bolt pattern in order to fasten your gear motor to whatever you want to run you can also clamp around this, but a lot of times the screws, uh, M3 in this case, are gonna be used to fasten it. So inside, you can see the multiple spur gears that Jason was talking about. Each one is uh, serving the purpose of gearing this down in order to reduce the speed of the output shaft in order to increase the torque of the, the motor itself. So this is gonna be a very high speed gear that mates to the first stage and so on until you get the appropriate speed from your output. You'll notice on the top here, there is a bushing that's holding this shaft in place. So when you have a radial load on the shaft, it's gonna apply the pressure to this bushing and hopefully not deflect that shaft and cause any binding inside of the gearbox. Uh, some of your very high-end spur gear motors are gonna have a bearing in place of this bushing. Uh, in order to have a reduced amount of friction when that radial load is applied. On top of the motor itself, you're gonna see a cast aluminum piece, and this is the basically the mount for the gearbox that goes on top of it. So you can see the three little threaded holes that the Phillips head screws screwed down into in order to hold all of this together. And then you've got the pinion gear that's oftentimes pressed on to the motor shaft in order to drive the gearbox. Next, let's talk about planetary gear motors. Uh, if you pick up a gear motor and the output shaft is centered, that's most likely gonna be a planetary gear motor uh, setup. And essentially it uses spur gears within it in a special configuration to maximize its torque and strength. Let's take a closer look at the planetary gearbox. For starters, there's usually a snap ring on the shaft itself. And the snap ring uh, is basically keeping the shaft from being pushed down towards the gears internally and causing uh, too much of an axial load inside of here. The, the snap ring rests on top of the, the bearing in this case, which there are actually two bearings on the top case of this gear motor that's helping support the, the shaft radially. This is an excellent candidate for high torque applications and ones that are gonna be taking a lot of radial load because it's not gonna increase the friction very much at all having those two bearings. This gearbox is held together with four little pan head screws. Once again, use the right screwdriver. I'm using one out of a little eyeglass set in order to get those screws out. Once you have the screws out, uh, your gearbox is basically completely apart. You can lift up on the shaft and expose the gears inside. As Jason mentioned, these two are spur gears because the, the teeth are in the same axis as the shaft that they're rotating on. But the configuration itself, because there are three planet gears and a sun gear, that those orbit around, these are considered uh, a planetary, or collectively, it's a planetary gearbox that it creates. Now, one thing you might notice is the globs of grease in here. Those are just to 
increase the longevity and decrease wear as these gears rotate around. The external cage on a planetary gearbox you'll see has internal teeth as well. So these planet gears will not only mate with the sun gear in the middle, but they also mate with the external cage to where when this thing really gets loaded up and the gears attempt to spread apart from one another because of the torque being applied to the shaft, they're not really able to do that. Uh, they're going to be held in a tight mesh because they're contacting both an inside gear and an outside gear that's holding everything together nicely. Now, the length of the gearbox is going to kind of give you a clue as to how many stages are in this gearbox. Usually a, a lower RPM gear motor uh, that has a, a lower speed output shaft is going to be longer because there has to be more stages of the gearbox in order to get that ratio down as far as you need. So we'll slide the external cage off and you can see this one has two additional stages. The second stage is all steel. The first stage you'll notice the gears are a little bit different. Uh, they're a, a nylon material, which nylon is fantastic for your first stage because it's in a very high speed, low torque application. The motor is running at a, a very high speed and driving these gears. So it's really difficult to cause damage to these gears. And it's more about finding material that's going to wear very well at such a high speed. And nylon is perfect for that. On top of the gear motor, you're going to see a cast aluminum piece. Uh, this piece has the four threaded holes for the little screws to screw down into and hold the gearbox together. And then much like the spur gear motor, you have a pinion gear that's pressed onto the motor shaft in order to drive this whole assembly. So you may be wondering, why would I choose one style of gear motor over the other? Well, here are some things to bear in mind. If in your application, you're most concerned with the strength or torque of a gear motor, as well as its durability, then a planetary gearbox is most likely the right option for you. If, however, your concern is noise output, you might want to consider a spur gearbox instead. Spur gearboxes, because they have less gears inside, is just one gear mating to another one in a series of stages to create that gear reduction. They create less noise, typically. The other thing about having fewer gears inside is a lot of times they're going to be shorter in overall length when compared to the planetary gearbox of the same ratio. And because there are fewer rotating components, a lot of times they're going to be lighter weight. The other thing about them being more simple is when comparing to the same gear motor, they are going to be typically less expensive. The last thing about a spur gear motor is the mounting options. Because the shaft is not centered with the body of the gear motor, you could put this in a clamping mount and rotate it in and out to adjust gear mesh or chain tension or belt tension or you can go the conventional route and use the threaded holes on the face and mount it directly to a surface, much like you do on a planetary gearbox. As always, if you have any questions, send us an email to tech at servocity.com.